tired. Um, we're going to talk about this idea that when we're talking about change, um, that somehow being tired has uh, something to do with an indicator that uh, we are ready to change. First of all, wanting to change and knowing how to change are two different things. Traditionally, programs uh, have stated if someone falls on their face after going through a program that they must not have been serious, uh, they weren't ready yet, they hadn't hit rock bottom, they were playing games, they were being manipulative. Um, I certainly can understand where that perspective comes from, but that perspective is really rooted in being judgmental. Uh, it's outdated, antiquated. It comes from the 70s when, you know, uh, we believed we had to tear people down before we could build them up. Um, and certainly that might that model might work for a handful of people and, and certainly worked for me. Uh, but in my practice, I've recognized that uh, many people just don't respond to that. And quite honestly, uh, even if it works, it takes a long time. And I think there are ways to get to the heart of the matter when it comes to change and, and or recovery quicker than tearing people down and building them back up. Uh, so this idea that uh, I'm tired, a lot of times people say, well, I'm changing, you know, I'm tired of paying the consequences, tired of sitting in jail, tired of hurting my family. Um, you know, when we're tired, all we need is a, a rest and then we can get our second wind at some point. Uh, rarely has someone been tired and never gotten back up to do something they did before. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes they were doing things that uh, uh, took a lot of energy, massive amounts of concentration and focus, um, whether it was good or bad, and eventually ran out of energy. But running out of energy doesn't mean that your values have changed, that your beliefs have changed, doesn't mean that uh, spiritually you've grown or have adapted. It, it just means that, quite honestly, the consequences are starting to weigh down on you, and you're trying to figure out a way to do it without having to pay the consequences. Um, you know, if in a traditional anger management program, you know, you're taught to play the tape all the way out, consider the consequences, you know, as if somehow... We, we're so dumb when we're practicing criminality or addiction that we no longer understand the consequences. Uh, the, the reality is we know the consequences. And so here's my twist on that. Uh, insanity is not doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. So you see, if you actually expect a different result, I believe you. I know that you're trying to uh, accomplish something differently, and maybe somehow you just haven't figured out that the reality of your situation is that you won't get a different result. So it makes sense to me if you think you're going to get a different result, so you keep doing it. I get that. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, knowing what the results will be and just not caring enough to stop. You're willing to accept that as a part of the, as the consequences. You're willing to accept that as a part of the, uh, as the lifestyle, and it's acceptable, so you do it. Uh, that's the insanity piece. Uh, the reality is being tired has nothing to do with change. In fact, it's a piss poor reason to think about change. However, on the flip side of that, I want to work with you where you're at, and so I want to say this. If that's what it takes for you to get started uh, on the process of change, then knock yourself out. Do it. But recognize this. It's a short-term endeavor. It's like burning gas that's too hot. It's like a Roman candle. It's going to burn out fast, and pretty soon you might find yourself back you know, at the drawing board trying to figure out, hey, what the heck just happened? Uh, why, why am I back in the same position after making an effort to make some changes in my life? Uh, so back to this anger management program, you recognize that, okay, they teach you to play the tape all the way out, consequences, think of who you're hurting, you know, don't want to go back to jail, don't want to get kicked out of the program, you know, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't imply that your view of violence has changed. What it's meant is that we've educated you in such a way to consider how to delay being violent, not necessarily how to stop being violent, but how to delay being violent. The, the premise is that if the reason you stopped from committing an act of violence because you were angry is because you didn't want to pay the consequence, it really implies that if the consequence didn't exist, you would commit, commit the act of violence. You follow me? You'd still do it if the price was right or if the time was right, or if the environment was right. But since you've been taught to think about that, you've been taught to delay it. We're not really stopping violence. We're not really changing violence. We're just taking a time out. Thus, I'm tired, right? And so just going to wait until we can afford to do that again, or, or we can physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually muster the energy to go back out there and do that stuff again. So what I'm suggesting is forget playing the tape all the way out. Ask yourself what kind of person you want to be. Do you want to be nonviolent? 
Do you want to be peaceful? It's not enough to stop something because you haven't figured out what you're going to do in, in respect to what you're stopping. If we're going on a vacation and I say we're not going to Florida, that doesn't tell us where we're going. We're no closer to getting to wherever that vacation site is than we were before we even made a plan. However, the illusion is because I've said what I'm not going to do, that thing, I think that that prepares me for what I am going to do. So here's what I'm suggesting. Stop talking about what you don't want to do. Stop talking about not using drugs. Stop talking about not being violent. Stop talking about not going to jail. Stop talking about not cheating on somebody. Stop doing all. Stop talking about that, period. You're wasting time. Start identifying what you do want to do. What is it that you want to be? What, what kind of person, what kind of man, what kind of woman do you want to be? What kind of young person do you want to be? What do you want in your life? Do you want freedom or you just want the lack of jail? Do you want happiness or do you just want the lack of sadness? Do you want strength or do you just want the lack of weakness? I mean, think about how we talk about ourselves when we're mad and we're huffing and puffing, right? We're out there trying to sell these wolf tickets, right? Uh, we're, we're not telling people how strong we are. We're telling people how weak we're not. I ain't no punk. I ain't no bitch. I ain't this. I ain't. We don't really promote what we are. We promote what we're not. As if we have to convince somebody other than convincing ourselves that this is not what I am. If I'm not concerned about being weak, why would I ever have to allude to not being weak? That would never even hit my consciousness. That would never hit my psyche. I would never, would never even come out of my mouth if I wasn't afraid about being weak. Today I talk about my strengths. I talk about my hopes. I talk about my visions. I talk about my dreams. I talk about my experiences. I talk about what I've learned. I talk about who I am, what I'm striving to be, not what I'm not. I don't worry about alcoholism. I don't worry about drug dependency, although I manage those things well. That's not what I spend my life talking about. I spend my life talking about what I am, what I'm becoming, what I'm striving for. Instead of walking into my future backwards because I'm always looking at the past, I choose to look forward and figure out what it is that I'm looking for out there, not behind me. Don't get me wrong. I'm certainly using my past to learn from and share the message of what you know where I've come from. The majority of my time is spent in the here and now and in the future. I create my future by how well I manage the here and now. I recommend you do the same. Good luck.